Yeah, hi, I'm Bill Uhas, engineer at TenKiv. And today um, I'm here to talk, talk to you about the details of the functioning of our TenKiv water sterilization system. So here at TenKiv, we make what we call the TenKiv Nexus, which is an integrated system of solar energy collection, distribution, and end use devices so that you can utilize the energy from the sun for an array of, of end uses. The TenKiv solar panel is a unique new design. It uses a combination of vacuum insulation, multi-layer super, super insulation, uh, selective emissivity coating, uh, very heavy uh, tempered glass, make it very, very robust. In our, so this is the, a, our third prototype prototype Mark III of our solar water sterilization system. It's completely self-contained, doesn't require any energy from the grid. Uh, so this is a smaller version, one-third scale, of what you would get if you backed the water purification system on our Kickstarter. If you got, if you ordered just the panel, you get a panel similar in construction to this, but three times this size. This panel is uh, one meter by 60 centimeters. The panel that you would get is one meter by 90 centimeters. I mean, sorry, two meters by 90 centimeters. So three times the area of this one. I mean, the panel is basically the heart of, it's the energy conversion portion of the 10 Kiv Nexus. So with the, it produces thermal energy in the temperature range from ambient up to 200 degrees Celsius above ambient. You can use it for heating hot water, for water sterilization, for water distillation, for uh, running an absorption chiller, for um, domestic hot water, for space heating. You could even use it to run a, uh, a heat engine to r drive a generator. So there's a whole, and, and you could use it for uh, distilling alcohol if you wanted to. There's, I mean, basically anything that uses energy, ideally anything that uses thermal energy because it's the most efficient when being used directly as a thermal energy source. Uh, essentially, there's only two connections to this panel. There is a, a liquid inlet and a vapor outlet, and you, 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 the vapor moves on its own power, does not require pumps or anything, moves to the end use, so you're, uh, and, and powers whatever device you'd want to power with it, whether, they, again, whether that's hot water, space heating, uh, heat engine. One of the things that makes the 10 kiv solar panel unique is that because of the uh, actually a, a host of design details it's able to operate at high efficiency at significantly higher temperatures than other flat plate collectors m much higher temperatures which allows you to drive or to power things that would not be practical to use with a normal flat plate collector for example, a heat engine to make electricity or an absorption chiller to run an air conditioner. Those are things that with a typical flat panel collector, really, you, you actually, you really couldn't do it. They would be so inefficient that it wouldn't make sense to do it. You could do it with a vacuum tube collector. It won't get as warm and it will run at significantly lower efficiency than the 10 kiv panel, but that's probably the, the closest comparison. So this, system is the, the 10 kiv nexus can be used for a whole host of applications this particular um, prototype setup is the water sterilization system but the connections are still they, they would be done in a similar way for whatever device you want to connect so every 10 kiv solar panel comes with four connections depending on your application you may use you'll you never use fewer than two but you wouldn't necessarily always use all four. So I'll go, I'll basically starting at the bottom, I'll go through what each one is. So each panel has two lower, two upper connections. The two lower connections both do serve the same function as do the two upper connections. The lower connection is a liquid inlet. The upper connection is a vapor outlet. You can use, in this particular case, we're using water as the heat transfer fluid. If you're running at higher temperatures, you might use propylene glycol. Uh, so 
and it, and it, it just to be clear, because it probably doesn't look like this is a water connection, in this, on this particular prototype, we're using one of the water inlet connectors as an in, a, a connector for a, a bunch of thermocouples, because we're measuring temperatures all over this panel and in the liquid. Uh, this vapor outlet is also, it's not being used as a vapor outlet on this setup. It's being used as the vacuum connection. One of the features of the 10 kiv collector is that it is vacuum insulated, essentially isolated from the environment that it's in. Uh, the, the vacuum insulation, there, there is no better insulation than vacuum. We have zero conduction and convection losses. In addition to that, uh, there, we have so-called super insulation or multi-layer insulation behind the panel and uh, a selective emissivity coating so the panel doesn't re-radiate heat. But in this, in this prototype setup, we're using what would sometimes be used as a vapor connection, as a connection for the vacuum pump to get that vacuum. The final version of the panel is, gonna ha is going to be set up somewhat differently than what you say see here. They are designed so that m with multiple panels, you essentially, the next panel just butts up here and automatically connects right flush to the panel next to it. So there, these, these connections, they were convenient for us for prototyping, but it's not the way you would get the panel, uh, a production panel. So you can connect, we designed it so that 10 panels in a row, uh, it, it, it has big enough connections, uh, adequate flow for 10 panels without an external manifold. But right now we're running, uh, we're using an artificial light source which is ideal for testing because we, it's a much more controlled light. The sun is always moving, clouds are coming and going. It's very hard to keep track of the exact solar insulation level. We use artificial lighting of an exactly known intensity and it, it stays constant for as long as the, uh, the duration of our tests gives us. It's easier for us to keep track of the data that way. So here I'm gonna go through the 10 kiv water sterilization system piece by piece. So we're starting, we start here with a liquid water pump that pumps the water into the solar panel. We fill the panel to the top of the manifold. The water picks up sun, uh, energy from the sun, goes from liquid to vapor, passes into the vapor line, which then goes into the first heat exchanger. In the heat exchanger, the vapor or gaseous water condenses, transfers its heat to the incoming um, biologically contaminated water. The water then flows out of the heat, the, 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 the now sterilized water flows out of the first heat exchanger into a heat recovery heat exchanger, which in dramatically increases the efficiency of the system, allows us to make much more water than if we simply ran it through one heat exchanger. Here, the incoming water gets preheated by the hot water coming out of the vapor heat exchanger. So from, from the heat recovery heat exchanger, the water flows into your storage tank, and that's the system. However, that so all sounds very, very simple, and it is, but this all needs to be very, very carefully controlled because we have to guarantee that the water is always heated to 100 degrees Celsius, that we never let any cold water run through the system. That is, all that control, uh, data acquisition control, is done by a 10 kiv tech DAC, uh, the product that we uh, developed in our first Kickstarter. In almost every typical 10 kiv Nexus system, there would, many of these components would, would be in there. You would have a drain back tank holding the heat transfer fluid that you use in the solar collector. You would have a small liquid pump. There would almost always be at least one heat exchanger to remove the heat from the circuit in the solar panel to whatever other device you wanted to power. Again, you know, whether it's a heat engine, hot water, you know, domestic hot water, space heating, whatever. So the, a, a typical system would have all the components except the heat recovery heat exchanger. That would be pretty much unique to this water sterilization system. Okay, so here we're running a basic demo of the water sterilization system. We have water coming in through, just through a garden hose, goes into the vapor heat exchanger, takes the heat from the solar panel, heats the water up to 100 degrees Celsius, 
into the heat recovery heat exchanger to make the whole process more efficient. Uh, the, the system that you would get from the Kickstarter is, as I mentioned earlier, three times the size of this one. It will produce on average 600 liters or 150 gallons of water a day. On a, in a, on a sunny summer day, it could be double that, more like 1,200 liters or uh, 300 gallons a day. Uh, the other thing is because this is a flat plate collector, it uh, picks up diffuse light just as well as direct sunlight. So this will work even on an overcast day. Obviously, it's somewhat decreased output because there is less light available, but it will still function just fine. So there are two more components that come with every 10 kg water sterilization system. There's a TechDAC data acquisition control system. This is an electronic system that we developed in-house. Uh, it takes um, data from a, a host of sensors in the panel, in the water, uh, heat exchangers of measuring the water temperature flow rates to ensure that the water is always completely safe to drink. And the other that is unique to our whole 10 kid nexus, the other component is the vacuum pump. So unlike other even vacuum insulated collectors, of which there are some, we have the ability to continually re-evacuate the system. What this, effectively what this does for us is that there is no lifetime, no expected end of life time for a 10 kib system. In vacuum tube collectors, eventually the vacuum will dissipate. Uh, there's, there's no such thing as a perfectly sealed system, so the pressure will eventually, air will eventually get back into the system. In our in, in the 10 kiv nexus system, we have the ability to continually pump that slight leakage back out of the system and thereby extending its life essentially indefinitely.